What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're talking about how to catch fish when it is hot out. Don't let those clouds behind me throw you. It is mid 90s and humid and hot. We got a water temp down here, 86.3 degrees. That water is hot. So summertime, where do these fish go and how to catch them? Let's go. So today I actually went to the uh, Bassmaster High School National Championship. I think it's 309 teams from around the country, high school teams. That's so cool. You know, moving from the West Coast, we are a little behind on that whole high school fishing thing, but out here it is massive. It is, it's, it's so many teams, so many boats, but uh, today at the weigh-in talking to a lot of young anglers and they were talking about how hot it is, the water temp, so I wanted to shoot this video. So one, it might help those guys if they're sticking around after the tournament, or two, maybe help you guys if you are in the same conditions. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but that is sweat. It is hot out. Again, looks dark, but it is scorching. So, summertime fishing uh, can be really, really tough on your body, right? You know, it's hot. Depending on where you are in the country, it could be 110, 115, 120 degrees. You're out there on the West Coast, Las Vegas, fishing out in the desert. Uh, out here, uh, where we're at on Chickamauga, you're looking at mid to upper 90s with high humidity. So then you throw in that humidity factor. Uh, it makes it really, really tough uh, to stay focused when you're, when you're facing these hot elements. So, um, But summertime, when, when the fish get real big, you know, real deep into this cover, it actually makes it easier for me and hopefully for you after this video uh, of predicting where these fish are gonna be. You know, as that water temp climbs, those fish are gonna go to the darkest, deepest vegetation cover that they possibly can. So, uh, you know, today I'm gonna mainly talk about how to catch them shallow. You know, obviously, as that water temp rises, some of those fish go out deep. You can catch them on ledges, catch them, you know, cranking, throwing a jig, maybe a shaky head or some kind of Carolina rig, Texas rig, worm, something like that. But uh, today, I want to focus mainly on shallow fishing uh, because I talked to a lot of the anglers out here uh, today after the weigh-in, and some of these teams, they idled ledges for two days and never found a school or they fished ledges for two or three days in practice and never caught fish the only bite they could get was up shallow in the grass and uh, that's what I love doing you know power fishing heavy braid heavy hooks heavy rod get those fish out of the deepest cover so now let's talk about where these fish are gonna be so let's go ahead and jump up here to the shoreline you know right here depending on what you guys can see. I came over to this bank right here. Now, what you can't see is the water goes back up in that grass, in those overhangs, probably two or three feet. Uh, but more importantly, you have two or three feet of depth back there. So those fish get back all the way in that stuff. So if you're coming through and you're fishing this with a square bill or a lipless crankbait or a swim jig, something like that, those fish are gonna be back in that stuff. Now, what makes it really, really easy, of course, we got the sun setting, so low light conditions, but uh, let's talk about a different scenario. Let's talk about middle of the day, say 11.30 or 12 o'clock, high noon, high sun. When you come up to a bank like this, now, again, we got a, a shoreline that's probably, I don't know, 150 yards long. There are probably five or six key pieces of cover that really stand out to me. And that is 90% of the time, that's where you're gonna get your bites because there's more shade. It's all about water temperature and it's all about getting out of that sun, getting in uh, that, that water that's heated up by the sun and getting back into that stuff. So a couple of these branches stick farther out. They're gonna cast a shadow a lot farther out into the water than the rest of this bank. Now, a couple of these casts, you can see there's some hard wood right over here. Hopefully you guys can see that I'm pointing to that. Let's see, go ahead and turn you. It's always, you never know how uh, how much you can see on these GoPros, so you can, you know, we got them set to shoot so wide. 
how about there let's go let's go there straighten you guys up a little bit but uh so we're fishing this bank you got some hard wood in the water at the base of that wood is going to be the stump and that's going to be a real hard cover for those fish to get up against and they can get right behind right around so those fish are going to be right up in that stuff so what i'm going to do i actually wouldn't approach this bank this bank this bank with a frog my number one bait is going to be some kind of flipping bait i'm either going to go with some kind of heavy flipping jig probably not in this scenario because this that's a straight floral rod setup so this scenario is perfect again power on power straight braid that's an ounce and a half tungsten weight paired up to a uh, creature style bait but what i'm going to do i'm going to take those five or six main branches that add more shade to this bank and I'm gonna take this heavy ounce and a half tungsten and I'm gonna put it right back in there. Now again, low light conditions, these fish are gonna spread out. But that scenario I gave you, high, you know, high sun right there in the middle of the day, it's all about the shade, it's all about the shadows. So you can really see taking a 150 foot, 150 yard stretch of bank like this and really see where those key areas are and you could boom, 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 fish those, and then move on to the next bank. You know, these fish are gonna be still active. So I got some hardwood, got some branches down here. Again, I'm just gonna come through, and I'm gonna flip all of this grass fairly quickly. Again, ounce and a half weight. Get right up on that grass edge. Now I will say this technique takes a little bit to get used to. You know, when you're popping up that ounce and a half weight, um, if you get bit or you think you get bit and you swing with a full 100% hook set, now you have an ounce and a half bullet coming at you. So you got to be very careful. Um, one key tip for you guys, right there on that hard piece of wood, I'm going to check my bait. I feel the weight. If I go to lift up and there's no weight there, reel down and set the hook because that fish is eating it on the fall. But you want to get in the habit of really uh, eliminating or cutting down the area that you're fishing this time of the year. Again, it's hot out. You know, everything you're doing is, is you know, you're, you're expending energy and you need to uh, maximize your fishing time as much as possible. So kind of talked about this bank. Now, I started here. Uh, just to kind of show you this this let's go back over here in the cut because a lot of the times like i said these fish are going to be in the very backs of stuff the deepest thickest vegetation now let's talk about let's talk about uh, deep fishing real quick that way we can cover that um for for you guys that are wanting to stay deep you know that's where you're going to find your ledges you're going to find you know especially out here on chickamauga it's all about uh current you know if they're generating water movement then those fish are going to position out there on those ledges and uh, crankbaits jigs flutter spoons that sort of stuff um, that water tent's going to be cooler down there but what i really like about the shallow gig is you can really uh, especially with that sun up it really positions those fish in certain areas so it just congregates those fish to the best locations and allows you to really pick apart the key casts multiple times throughout the day whereas if you're fishing the deep fish you know it's all about timing and it's all about uh, you know, getting those fish fired up finding the fish you know they could be on they could be on 30 miles of, uh, of ledge right you got to find them where fishing shallow I can take a, a quarter mile section of bank and fish it effectively in just a couple of hours, really keying in on the main areas those fish are gonna be, and it's all based on the shade. Now, if you're fishing, say you're fishing, uh, you're fishing a lake with a lot of docks, obviously you can catch fish there, but um, you know if you're fishing docks, make sure that you are 
fishing the farthest back, the darkest, deepest stuff, the cast you can make, because that's where those fish are gonna get. You know, if they're not, if it's a deep dock, obviously they're gonna be a little bit deeper in that cooler water, but if it's a shallow dock, you gotta get that bait skipped back there, all the way back in that darkest stuff, underneath the, the biggest area of the dock. It's gonna produce more shade. Uh, we kind of covered that recently in, in uh, that dock fishing video. But uh, again, back here we got, uh, got a little bit of sparse grass. This is where that swim jig really, really works well. You know, Matt and I, we just got back from Florida for iCast, and uh, you wouldn't believe the stuff we are fishing, the thick, heavy, heavy grass, straight braid with a California j uh, swim jig, just throwing this bait right up into that grass. And just like a four wheel drive, just plowing through that and then just reeling. Those fish don't care. They're not used to seeing baits back there that deep. Now, we've yet to talk about grass this time of year in this video. Uh, obviously grass produces uh, clean filtered water, right? More oxygenated water, kind of filters that, uh, that water out. Those fish are gonna get deep, deep, deep back into that grass. So uh, if you're not flipping or punching through that grass, that's where the frog comes into play because you can fire this thing all the way back up in there and try and get those fish to come out. You know, coming into this cove, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw a frog along this grass that's on the surface. Again, power on power, you need something that's gonna be able to get these fish out of the deepest cover, the deepest structure, you know, say tree stumps or branches, logs, whatever it may be, get those fish out and away from that, through the grass and to the boat. So it's always 65 pound braid, uh, heavy frog rod, and a nice frog with real stout hooks. So I'm gonna fish fairly quickly through the back of this grass back here. I think you guys can see all this. I'm looking at a little tiny screen, but I think you guys can see all this. So right back here where that tree is, I'm gonna fish that outside grass, working that frog. And it's gonna be kind of a one-two punch. This time of the year, I always have a frog tied on, and then I always have weedless flipping or punching bait. I'm gonna approach this cove. I'm gonna fish this outside grass with the frog. Then I'm gonna go back to this grass back there and I'm gonna flip, you know, every couple feet, just flip this bait in. Shake, 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 pull it up, flip again, let it fall. Again, with that ounce, ounce and a half weight, it's gonna fall fairly quickly. Those fish are gonna be back up into that stuff. So with that heavy weight, that bait is gonna fall quickly. It creates that reaction uh, strike. Again, you're rigged weedless. So you don't have to worry about getting hung up. Flip it out there, let it fall, shake, 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 check it. <laughs> if you go to lift up and you don't feel that ounce and a half weight, reel down and set, because well, what has happened is that fish is it. eating it when it fell through. What a but back to the situation, gonna flip that grass. Then I'm gonna pick up the frog and I'm gonna fish under these overhangs. Again, those fish, it's all about shades. They're, right now, these fish can be anywhere out here on this grass line. They're gonna be out here hunting, right? But middle of the day, when it's hot out, that's when those fish are gonna position back up underneath that deepest, darkest vegetation. Like I said, the wood, the, the, the stumps, the branches, the laydowns, and deep into that grass. So it takes this whole cove and really limits where those fish are gonna be. I'm gonna spend most of my time in that grass a few of the overhangs back here in the back, and then that hard wood in the back. You know, if it's a long bank, say you're fishing a long shoreline, you know, maybe it's a quarter mile, half a mile long, you're gonna look down that shoreline and you're gonna see the four or five branches that stick out the farthest. You're gonna see the little divots in the shoreline where there's little cuts back there. Those fish can get back up underneath it. That's the stuff you're gonna flip. So look for the little, uh, things that, that kind of look different, if you will, uh, that, that's really gonna position those fish. You know, say you're fishing, again, we're talking shallow right now. Say you're fishing a lake with a lot of like cattails or reeds, you know, Clear Lake back in, in, in Northern California. Awesome, awesome frog fishing lake. Summertime, you get the cheese, you get the matted grass, you get the reeds, and uh, it'd be sometimes it'd be really hard to figure out where do I start? Do I start on the tulies? Do I start on the, 
the grass mat that's two miles long? Where do I start? So uh, for me, looking down that shoreline and I would see the reeds, I would look where the reeds would make a point and stick out a little bit farther than everything else. So those fish could be away from the bank, but they're still back in that cover. You know, those, those reeds have a, a root clump. They get real deep right at the base of that and sit on that point. So you could just run down that bank and just flip the, the reed points that would stick out maybe two feet, three feet farther out than the rest of the shoreline. That's where those fish would be. You know, fishing, say a random shoreline without reeds. Now you're looking for laydowns. You're looking for uh, grass lines. You know, if there's a real thick grass line next to a little point, that's where you're going to spend your time. That's where the fish are going to be. You know, it's uh, simplifying it right now. It's uh, you're looking for the best areas because that's going to hold the most and the biggest fish. Um, you know, fishing deep. Like I said, you can spend a lot of time trying to find them out there on the ledges, out main lake, points, uh, rock piles, that sort of stuff. But again, you gotta go find them. You gotta use your side imaging, you gotta do a lot of graphing, and really try to find where those fish are grouped up. Uh, once you find it, it can be lights out, can be awesome. But for me, if I've just got a few hours to go out, I'm typically gonna go shallow because again, you can really look at that bank, look at that shoreline and figure out where those fish are gonna be. Don't be afraid to go out when it's hot out. Again, I'm soaked. Obviously this, this clothing helps a lot, but soaked with sweat, it's hot out, but the fish are gonna be chewing and you can have some of the best days of the entire year fishing when you're most uncomfortable. But to hopefully guys, that simplifies it for you. You know, baits, like I said, real quick, I'm going power on power, shallow. I am going some kind of Texas rig bait, um, you know, big jungle flipping hook, tungsten weight, two bobber stops, 65 or 60 pound braid, uh, reel, high speed reel, and a, and a fairly stout uh, rod. But then the frog, obviously summertime, grass up shallow, can't beat the frog. Again, power on power with that as well. Three quarter ounce swim jig, half ounce California swim jig, uh, paired up with a little swim bait, straight braid, right through the thickest cover. Don't be afraid of the, the high temps. You know, stay hydrated, wear your proper, you know, sunscreen or, or, or clothing for skin protection. But uh, summertime fishing can be awesome if you know where to look and know how to get them out of that cover. But uh, as always, guys, again, we appreciate you. If you learned something from this video, hit that thumbs up button. Remember to subscribe. We do three videos, four, five, sometimes six videos a week for you. Slim simply teaching so that you guys can catch more and bigger bass. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.